Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezondi with your technology and social media news. If you want to be a part of this technology conversation, find us on SABC Network. Now that's on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It's News Network at sabc.co.za on email. You can also use the hashtag SABC Network. Here's what's coming up in the program. We tell you about the big tech winners at the cars.co.za awards. We have information about some of the technologies to be released in South Africa this year. They are showcased in Cape Town. Our discussion is about the lawsuit Cameroon is now facing. It's over the blockage of internet access in English-speaking regions of the Central African country. Dr. Enma Mare from the University of Johannesburg is here for that one. Hello and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. Now, can you just tell us why the internet is being blocked in those regions? Ah, just to do with the protests and also it has to do with the, you know, the, the protests around you know, the marginalization of these. Uh... All right, we'll have a deeper conversation about that later in the program. But first, let's start with your technology and social media news. Now, Mazda scored big at this year's Cars.co.za Consumer Awards. The brand impressed the judging panel, which praised the SUV for its excellent drive and technology. At the Cars.co.za Consumer Awards, Mazda scooped two prestigious prizes for its ability to put the latest technology safely at the fingertips of the driver. We decided also to launch our international technology in our cars, which is called SkyActive. So the Mazda 2 has the SkyActive 1.5 engine, which is fuel efficient. I think the nimbleness in driving, the safety features, the bells and whistles you need in a car, you get in the nimble Mazda 2 connectivity you get. When you move on to the SUV CX-5, which is really, really our top seller and our flagship SUV, you get the best of the best of the SkyActive technology. The awards which took place in Johannesburg aim to recognize efforts amongst car makers in the increasingly important technology-driven market. We want to turn it around and, and being about the consumer. So when people look at the consumer awards, we want them to know that if they take just the top five cars in our awards, or the top three, or hopefully the winner, if they choose, if they choose from that list of cars, they're choosing a very good car. So we want to drive consumer behavior. They say even though people may not be buying as many cars as before, they still want the newest technology out there present in the cars when they do buy one. So the technology between the two opposites are, are quite different. But what you find increasingly is that even at budget car level, you don't have to compromise on safety features. So the likes of ABS, ESP, all these kind of things is filtering down from the, from the extremely luxury cars down to, to your budget cars and everything in between. But what's, what we're seeing this year a lot is a lot of um, active safety technologies. A panel of distinguished judges, including TV personality Claire Mawisa, radio personality Anel Mdoda, and tech journalist Nafisa Akabo, said they considered brands that continue to push the digital envelope. They also feel that car technology has blossomed into one of the great differentiators amongst competing car models. Your luxury and your premium cars have really, they really have gone the extra mile to make sure that all the bells and whistles are in a car because that's how close the judging process can be. One car can just inch another car out of the winning just because of the technological aspects that are now available inside the car, on the console, in the dashboard. So it's amazing what you can get in a car nowadays. Other winners included Volkswagen Group, which had the most nominations at 10, followed by the BMW Group with four, Alfa Romeo, Kia, Mitsubishi and Peugeot making their first respective appearances in the final. LG held its InnoFest for the first time in South Africa this year. They showcased a range of new technologies that will be coming soon. This includes vacuum cleaners that are robots and TVs that give the answers to some of the questions you have. 
Vacuum cleaners that do the work for you with the use of robotics and interview fridges with knock-on effects for you to see what's inside without opening the door might not seem so new but they haven't released in South Africa yet. They're coming this year. These and other technologies were on show at the LG Middle East and Africa InnoFest that took place in Cape Town. It's also always tricky to get licenses quick enough for some of the products to launch here at the same time as the rest of the world and other things cause the delay. A lot of our products are Wi-Fi enabled and you're looking at infrastructure based products that utilize whether it's fiber whether it's a wi-fi based solution now sometimes the software is only available one or two years later in south africa to comp you know to have all the products compatible with each other and that seems to be our you know our lag in our timeline but when they do launch, the consumer would have had time to find out what would work or wouldn't work for them. I think the most exciting thing coming out of Innerfest for a lot of South African consumers is going to be the range of televisions, particularly the really high-end uh, OLED W8 series. Uh, the reason being we haven't seen any of the W series in South Africa before. Now, look, to be clear, it's going to be a pretty small market for them. The anticipated price is around a quarter of a million rand, but that'll obviously fall in coming years. But what you can expect is the really, really cutting edge in uh, OLED TV technology. Of course, if that's a little bit too rich for your pocket, uh, we're also going to get some updated SUHD TVs. Apart from the new home appliances on show here, there are new technologies that are going into most of what we will be using in future. A more interesting piece of technology is actually the artificial intelligence. The ThinQ platform, you know, many other companies have done it before. You know, we've seen it from especially smartphone manufacturers. What LG is doing that's different is they're actually making it more open source. So any sort of AI platform can sync and connect and integrate with theirs, which takes it more from you know just being something in your home or your smartphone to being able to connect to you know future devices whether it's car South Africa should be getting some high-end products faster this as the country becomes an important consumer market for big brands we have been recognized as a premium country and, and, and I think a lot determines the, the exchange rate is really in our favor this year as well. So we're going to look at products like InstaView, which is a fridge that when you knock it twice, the door becomes transparent and you can see what's inside. We've got a total new washing machine category called Twin Wash, which is a, a, essentially a twin loader category. You have front, wash, front, front loader, twin loader and twin wash and what that does for you is that essentially gives you an, an, an aspect of doing three different things at the same time or two different things by means of having a washer dryer combo at the top and a separate two kilo washer at the bottom. While it's been determined that the new fridges and vacuum cleaners that do the work for you are coming this year, there are products that don't have a release date in South Africa yet, like these air purifiers. LG says it's because South Africa's air is pretty clean, thankfully. Now, video games that aim at approaching social issues such as female genital mutilation have been developed by a group of young Egyptians. Let's take a look. An Egyptian game developer has created interactive video games to approach social issues such as female genital mutilation and to raise awareness among youth. We are trying to offer something new because when the West develops games, even on the Middle East or the Egyptian culture, they do so from their own perspective. But when we develop the games, we make them better because we know more about the experiences we have lived through and continue to see the wrong practices happening and we know what the right things are. Another game created by the company Wazanfi Shokran helps manual workers learn communication skills for interviews. The name of the game is Wazafni Shokran. The game is trying to raise awareness among the people who may have not completed their education or have not been able to enter the field that will help them know what they should be doing before going to work. The game is supposed to revolve around what a guy or girl should be doing before they leave for work. The developers have created more than seven games so far, most still in the prototype phase, with the first expected to hit mobile platforms within the next few months. The games will be released for free and will mainly target mobile platforms. The company has been founded by eight people, all of whom have studied game development at Cairo's Information Technology Institute. 
It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. After the break, we chat about Cameroon's internet blockages with Dr. Enma Made from the University of Johannesburg. Stay with us. in-depth look of all your stories of the day across the world. Stay tuned to Primetime News every day for 18 hours. It is the SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram News Network at sabc.co.za on email. Welcome back. Now, English-speaking parts of Cameroon have had internet blockages for a few months now. This is because of protests that have been taking place since November 2016. People have been saying that English-speaking Cameroonians aren't treated equally as people from French-speaking parts of the country. Now, Internet Without Borders wrote an open letter to the government of Cameroon to say internet shutdowns and uh, violence go hand in hand. There are reports that two English-speaking regions have had the internet restored. Some uh, protesting Cameroonians are now calling for the secession of the English-speaking regions from the rest of the country. This happens as the Central African country prepares to host the African Cup of Nations. Now joining me in studio to further this discussion is Dr. Enmaya Mare from the University of Johannesburg. Hello and thank you for being a part of our network. Thank you so much for inviting me. <clears throat> now, uh, Dr. Mare, can you just tell us about um, whether this is quite common in Cameroon? It's been continuous in the last um, year or so, no? Yes, it has actually been going on for the past one year, and it's very interesting how, you know, despite even the, 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 the you know, the pronouncement by Jeff K, who is the rapporteur for the protection and promotion of freedom of expression, that Cameroon must restore internet, they have not even needed that call. It's very interesting how, you know, Cameroon wants to, to you know, to, to, to be treated in the family of nations with that kind of, you know, behavior. Mm. Um, and it seems like Internet Without Borders has entered this conversation, criticizing the government, saying that violence goes hand in hand with Internet shutdowns. And do they have a leg to stand on with the um, lawsuits that they want to go ahead with against Cameroon? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the first of its kind, you know, to, 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 to see, you know, you know an, an international organization actually taking a country or a government to court. And it will be interesting to see how, you know, the, 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 the lawyers and also the people that are involved in the case are going to handle the case because it's, 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 it's a unique case. As you have said, and to, what what is very interesting about it is that you know if 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 the, the organisation managed to win this kind of case, it's going to send tremors you know throughout the country, throughout, throughout Africa. Because if you look at 2016 alone, we have seen that only um, about 11 countries actually actually undertook these kinds of internet shutdowns. So it's very interesting to see how it's going to happen. Now, which countries have um, uh, shut down the internet in the last year or so? Recently, we have seen Chad. 
We've also seen DRC because, you know, elections are upon us and the, 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 you know, Joseph Kabila is refusing to go and, you know, people are demonstrating and he has resorted to shutdowns of the internet. And we've also we've seen the same, you know, in terms of Chad where protests have also generated uh, these kinds of internet in Chad. So what, what is actually running across, you know, Africa, we realize that these countries actually fear protests, they also fear elections. So when elections come and the, the incumbent are not, you know, clear whether they are going to win, they always resort to shutting down the internet so that they can be able to do whatever the shenanigans they want to do before the elections or during the elections. Uh, uh, but how would it help them if they shut down the internet in terms of, uh, of elections, in times of protests against the government and in times of dissent? It's about make, muting, you know, muting people from you know, discussing this issue. So it's about silencing. It's stifling dissent. It's also stifling people from actually expressing their, their opinions. So it, 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 it has all these kinds of you know, you know, you know, ripple effects on, on society. But ultimately, given that we've got digital economies, it also do and also destroy you know, people's yeah. livelihoods, which is quite interesting. Mm, so a lot of um, entrepreneurs who rely on the internet to make a living then can't. Yes, for example, in, in Cameroon right now, people who are part of the Silicon Mountain, which is, you know, a typical, you know, your Sil Silicon Valley kind of, you know, you know, replica in Africa, actually, I've, I've actually lost a lot of business. Actually, an organization based in U Uganda, known as the PESA, have actually done calculation. They have actually said this about, the people have lost about 230 30 million U.S. dollars over the past one year, which is quite, you know, significant in a country where people are very poor. That would also hurt innovation, would it not? It does, exactly, it does. So, ultimately, Ultimately, what it creates, it creates, you know, it feathers this uh, notion of digital divide where people who are, cannot access, in their access to internet, cannot be part and parcel of the global economy, which is a very unfortunate. Mm. Um, uh, would you say that um, the, what was termed by many as the Arab Spring um, is the result uh, of, or is the reason a lot of African governments are doing this? Yes, actually, we have seen that dictators tend to copy and you know copy and you know learn from each other. So ultimately, what Mohsen Barak did during the Arab Spring, trying to you know to 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 to, to, to shut the internet, especially in, in Egypt, has actually been replicated. But in some countries, it has worked. Some in some countries, it has, it hasn't worked. So it's very interesting to see how you know Cameroon in, intends to, to 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 continue with this. Mm. Um, so would you say that in a country with um, internet access, uh, a protest would be organised better? Is that maybe, um, is there proof of that? Is there even proof that if there's no internet access that um, people will then not protest and people will then not share negative views about the government? Actually, it has shown the reverse, actually, that people can actually mobilize more offline when they, they, are, they are denied the right to use the online spaces. So it doesn't really follow that once you close the internet, then you have stifled dissent. Sometimes it can actually spare it to other spaces where it becomes very difficult even to contain. So it's just, you know, you know, lack of lack, lack, lack of info, you know, lack, lack of info, information on the part of governments that, you know, if we stop the internet, people are not going to, 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 to continue with the protests. Mm. Um, what role um, do network providers um, play here? Um, there are some big international um, organizations that work in some of these countries. For example, in the DRC, you'd find South Africa's Vodacom, you'd mm. find South Africa's MTN in some of uh, the regions, you'd find Orange from France in some of the countries. Uh, what role do these international network providers play here? It's a, it's a, they are caught in between because on the one hand they want to make money in these countries but at the same time when the government comes and says stop the internet or shut down the internet they have no, they, 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 they have no, they have no recourse because ultimately what they want to do is to protect their licenses because remember governments are the ones that are responsible for dispensing these licenses so if you don't adhere to what they have said ultimately your license can get taken away from you so ultimately these providers are caught in between so at the end of the day they just go ahead with what the government has said. In your view, should they get involved or should it be business as usual and should they abide by what the government says? I think w it, it, it depends, but what I would say is that, you know, if, 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 if you want to make money, you also need to make sure that you also, you know, ensure that human rights are not, are not violated. So if you want to be part and parcel of human rights violations through internet violations, then you become, you know, li you know liable for, 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 for suing by, by, by the people because you're also denying people the right to communicate and the right to impart information. All right, so we will be watching that case by Internet Without Borders there against Cameroon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. All right, Dr. Right. Anmaya Mara there is with the University of Johannesburg. Now, this week we caught up with actress Tato Tabete, and she told us what her favorite piece of technology is.
What's up, my name is Tano Tabete. My favorite piece of technology, probably my laptop. Can't imagine my life without it. There's nothing I can do without my laptop. Welcome to Media Monitor, the show that analyzes the big news stories that made headlines. We bring you robust discussions on stories that made headlines in the week, where we interact with media analysts to unpack these top stories. Join me every Sunday morning from 9 to 10 Central African time as I bring you riveting news and analysis. Stay tuned to Media Monitor every Sunday from 9 a.m. We're talking news, business, science, sporting updates, both continentally and abroad. South Africa is in its first economic recession since 2009. Currency has appreciated um, you know, quite a lot, especially for this year. And it has benefited from a number of things. Not, you know, not so much to do with what was happening um, here at home. The Islamic State-linked news agency AMAC claims the latest attack was launched because of Australia's backing in the US fight against the group. Constad is one of the dozens of women who have accused Cosby of sexual assault, but hers is the only case recent enough to be subjected to criminal prosecution. Stay tuned to News Today at 3 p.m. from Monday to Friday on SABC News. A lot of us rely on tech to survive, and Africa is already a mobile-first continent. We build a mobile technology that connects motorcycle taxis to commuters and businesses in real time. My phone was the, the most important thing. Africans are using technology to innovate. On Network, we have African technology and social media news. Even robots have heard about us. Hello, watch Network on SIBC. For African technology and social media news, join me Pumela Lezondi on Network every Sunday at 9 p.m. Hashtag SABC Network or follow us, SABC Network, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Now, Apple Inc. has opened a store in Seoul in South Korea and a major cryptocurrency exchange in Japan has been hacked. These are some of the top sto tech stories that made headlines in the rest of the world. <laughs> A large number of customers braved the cold in Seoul on Saturday to be among the first to visit South Korea's first official retail store of U.S. tech giant Apple. The retail stores for Apple products in South Korea had uneven qualities. I am happy to see this store open. The new store opened after 380,000 South Koreans joined a collective lawsuit against Apple over the deliberate slowdown of their iPhones caused by controversial Apple software. Now heading over to Japan. A major Japanese cryptocurrency exchange has lost 58 billion yen, about 528 million US dollars in digital assets after a hacking attack, making it the world's biggest ever digital currency theft. My total losses are about 1 million yen. I was shocked finding it difficult to trust virtual currencies anymore. Others probably will no longer invest in them as well. 
Customers can purchase and sell 13 types of digital currencies at CoinCheck, which was founded in 2012. Transactions on the platform once accounted for half of the country's total. Off we go to the US of A. The head of the US Federal Communications Commission on Monday said he would oppose a federal government move to build and run a national super fast 5G wireless network, calling any efforts such as costly and counterproductive. President Donald Trump's national security team is looking at options to counter the threat of China spying on U.S. phone calls that include the government building a superfast 5G wireless network, a senior administration official said on Sunday. And this week, our Twitter poll has been asking what you look at when you buy a car. Now, in first place are 55% of respondents who say they look at the technology of the vehicle. In last place are people who look at the exterior. That figure is at 13%. There is 15% who look at the torque of the vehicle and 17% of respondents say they look at other things. And that's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. News Network at SABC.co.za on email. We leave you with visuals of robot barristers in a Japanese cafe. For me and the rest of the network team, have a good one. Bye-bye. and recall.